This happened last October, close to Halloween. My parents and brother were making the trip from Florida to Tennessee to help my grandmother move into our house, and they wouldn't be back for a few days. Naturally, I thought it would be nice to have the house to myself for a couple days instead of traveling for hours in a car. On the second night of enjoying the alone time in my house, my heart dropped when I heard almost what sounded like a hand slap against my bedroom window. My house is one story in a rural area with few neighbors. After ruling out any animals or natural ways this could have happened, I decided to take a look for myself, so I moved the blinds to see if I could get a look at anyone running, hoping it was just a prank. I was almost annoyed to see no one, but what happened next made the situation go from confusing to frightening. When I started to hear the doorknob to the door being forcefully shaken and twisted, causing almost a bang at the door, and because of this, my dog started barking loudly, increasing my adrenaline in the situation. thinking it could still just possibly be a prank by one of my few friends that knew I was alone. I began recording a video on Snapchat to send to my friends so that I could maybe confirm it was one of them. The first video starts with me standing a few feet back from the door to see if I could record it being moved again, and eventually I try to record outside the glass doors. The video ends when I'm terrified to hear behind me that my screened-in patio back door was just forced open. Before I could even turn around, my phone drops to the floor. I sent the first video to my three friends. Whoever this was behind my house still couldn't get inside, but it was freaking me out knowing they weren't afraid to try. I wait a few minutes, and two of my friends send snaps from their homes, claiming their innocence and asking to keep them updated. Still a little freaked out, I realized my last friend Logan had opened the snap but didn't respond, which ironically would be the one person out of my group to try something like this. Feeling more confident it was Logan. I decided to start a new video with flash on and tried to take a look from the backyard if there was anyone in the open grass yard. After making sure the front door was locked, I walked out hoping Logan would pop out to try and scare me. I checked behind some bushes and scrap wood on the side of my house, but instead I was greeted with just darkness and quiet. Only after 15 seconds of walking outside, I was immediately uncomfortable with the situation I was putting myself in. My fears got the better of me and I decided to just go back inside. I stopped the video and returned to my living room. Logan finally responds to my snap, causing my breathing to halt when I see a picture of him in bed with his girlfriend saying, What the fuck bro, call the cops. I immediately call 911 and make sure no windows or doors could be unlocked. I was advised to keep all doors locked and to call back if I hear any more forceful entry noises. It was only days later that I would re-watch the saved videos to find a creepy black figure watching me behind my tool shed while I searched behind the scrap wood and bushes, almost looking like they were deciding to attack me or not. Seeing it for the first time, and even now, makes me want to throw up from fear. Nothing has happened since, but I still wonder how someone knew I was alone that day, and what could have happened had I made eye contact with the figure watching from the corner of that shed. I'm a 17-year-old boy living in a small neighborhood in the Midwest of the United States. The neighborhood I live in is a tight-knit community, one where everyone knows each other and is usually friendly towards one another. My street is a small cul-de-sac with three houses on each side and one at the end. The cul-de-sac itself rests on a small hill. At the bottom is a lake surrounded by forest and other houses. It's not a very dense forest, but it's far away from any densely populated city, and it gets very quiet at night, with the exception of some dogs barking, a late-night driver, and on rare occurrences you can hear a coyote in the distance. One night at around 2 a.m., both my mother and older brother whom I live with were off in their respective rooms either sleeping or just keeping to themselves. I too was about to go to sleep 
and at the time was just resting and watching a YouTube video in bed. A few videos in, I heard a strange sound coming from across my room. It was a sort of soft thud as if someone had lightly tapped the wall across from my bed. I wasn't alarmed when I first heard it, figuring it was my cat Spot coming to sleep at the foot of my bed. I sat up to see what he was doing, but he was nowhere to be found. In fact, there was nothing in my room that was out of place or that could even make such a noise. However, I didn't hear the noise again, so I went back to YouTube, and after a while, completely forgot that it even happened. That was until I heard another noise. But unfortunately for me, this noise was not a quiet thud or tapping sound. It was much more unsettling. Coming from outside, in the direction of the lake, I heard loud screeching sounds. I thought it might have been some kind of animal, but it sounded eerily similar to a child crying, or maybe even screaming. I opened my window to get a better listen to what I was hearing, and took a recording to show my friend. By this point, I was starting to get a bit freaked out, so I went to my brother's room to see if he heard it too. I was hoping that maybe it was all in my head, and that I was just tired, but no, he heard it too. The friend I sent the recording to agreed it was creepy, and sounded like either an animal in pain or a crying kid. The more I thought about it, the creepier it became. If it was an animal in pain, why haven't I ever heard a sound even remotely similar to this in the many years I've lived in this house? didn't sound even remotely similar to a fox, coyote, or any animals I know about, and this forest isn't big enough for an animal much bigger than that. And if it was a child, why was it alone, screaming and crying in the woods in the middle of the night? Then there was that thud that I heard from earlier that night. Was that somehow connected, or is it simply a coincidence that I heard two creepy sounds in the matter of minutes? I haven't heard any kind of noises like that since, and by that I am glad. But to this day, it still creeps me out that none of us could truly figure out what could have created those sounds. I live in an apartment in a two-family house. I'm on the lower level. The owner of the house, Rob, lives upstairs sometimes, but he has multiple houses, so he's not really here that often. Rob and I are pretty much friends by this point so he tells me when he's going to be gone for extended periods of time. During the time of this story, Rob had told me he'd be gone for two weeks out of state. He told me this so that I would know that I could put both my cars in the driveway. I spend a lot of my nights in the living room reading. My level of the house has access to the back door and the deck outside, so you can probably guess where this story's going. I was reading my book on the couch in the living room by the lamp. Complete silence in the room aside from the night crickets outside, just the way I liked it. And bang. There was quite literally a bang on the glass of the sliding back door. I obviously jumped out of my skin. That door led to the backyard. Nobody should ever be back there knocking on it. I wondered if maybe Rob had returned early, but that didn't seem likely. It was just one distinct bang, though. It could have been a fox or a possum running into it by accident. Still, I got up to go check it out. I moved the sliding blind out of the way of the door and turned on the deck light. The deck was clear, though as I thought it would be. I live in the calmest town ever anyway. Break-ins are never heard of here. I close the blind on the door again though, just because I do get a little uncomfortable with the idea in the back of my head that someone's outside in the dark just watching me. I think that's a pretty normal feeling. A while passed because I finished a whole nother chapter in my book when it happened again. This time though, it wasn't just a singular bang. It was a bunch of deliberate knocks or bangs on the glass. It had to be a person. It went on for a bit. So I turned off the lamp, and this is where I picked up my phone and started recording. As I opened the blind and flicked on the light to the deck, the noises stopped, and there wasn't a single person in sight, not even an animal. I looked over the edge of the deck to see if maybe someone jumped over the railing. Nope, nothing. I didn't stay outside for long. I couldn't lock that door quick enough when I went back inside. 
By this point, I just went to my bedroom and shut the door and laid in my bed. I didn't know what the hell I had just witnessed outside, how there could be knocks at the door one second, then nobody there the next second. I was calling it a night. I wasn't planning on leaving my room again after that. I browsed Instagram and YouTube for a while on my phone, then turned it off and tried to go to sleep. Silence for the longest time. And then right at the foot of my bed, there was a noise. The sound of someone exhaling. I screamed a doe for the light switch, and when the light turned on, my room was empty. I stood paralyzed, breathing heavily for a moment, trying to comprehend what just happened. I searched under the bed and the closet, but there wasn't a soul in my room. I know what I heard though, it wasn't in my head, just like the door wasn't in my head. I slept in the living room after that, though I didn't feel much safer in there, fearing I'd hear bangs at the back door again. It was a relatively sleepless night for me. Rob told me he's never experienced anything like this, and he couldn't think of anyone who might have wanted to target him for anything. I never had believed in anything paranormal until that night. I haven't had any experiences that intense ever since, though.